Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye. The concept of kingdom advancement is not a new concept in this house. We have um, dealt with different series at different points in time attempting to help us understand what the kingdom is all about and um, the concepts of the kingdom and how to advance the kingdom so we've we've taught several messages different dimensions different approaches but just a little refresher so that i'll connect with what i want to discuss today we have learned and for those of us who are just learning um there are two dimensions you may want to write it down again there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement every time we talk about the advancement of god's kingdom it is first and foremost important for every and any believer to be interested in this subject if you are not interested in the concept and the whole idea of kingdom advancement then it means you do not love god and you're not a contributor to the building of his kingdom kingdom advancement generally speaking refers to before i give you the dimensions um, it refers to any listen and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed to establish the lordship of christ listen please any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed right to establish the lordship of christ first across the hearts of men or in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed like an arsenal to the end that the lordship of christ be established in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities that's the definition of kingdom advancement so we say we are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which we are making use of every scriptural arsenal it must be scriptural to advance the frontiers of the kingdom by this definition it suggests that there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement number one is establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men this is very important you will want to write that the first dimension to kingdom advancement is the establishment of the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension is taking the culture the principles and the ideologies of the kingdom and using them to transform society so the first dimension has to do with a spiritual reality establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension has to do with communicating his ideology across every strata of human activities it's important you know this the first dimension of kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ um, in the hearts of men will require what we know to be evangelism and discipleship i'm just doing a recap we have taught this the whole idea of what we know to be evangelism and discipleship they are the structures that were designed by god to bring men to bring the establishment of the lordship of christ across the hearts of men um, there are all kinds of versions and understandings about 
discipleship and about evangelism and this is not in any way attempting to interpret it in the religious way that we know because for many people when we talk about evangelism or discipleship the concept has been so abused it's like an indoctrination into a denomination and their tenets that's not necessarily God's idea of discipleship evangelism and discipleship is the scriptural pathway to establishing the lordship of Christ across the hearts of men then the second dimension taking the influence of the kingdom his culture his ideology permeating society when we are able to successfully do these two things then it can be said that the kingdom of God is advancing within a territory or in a dispensation my concern this evening this night is um, the establishment of the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men I want to just zoom it a little there and um, help us to be very effective at doing this by God's grace I think that we understand the concept of influence and how to take the the light and the power and the culture of Jesus Christ across territories we've spoken about different mountains and how that we need to establish the value system of the kingdom but I think that many people do not know how to establish the lordship of Christ across the hearts of men so I want us to look at a few things that I believe will be very very important Daniel chapter 12 please verse 3 Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 media we have a lot of scriptures today so please you'll be ready for that um, this will be more of a study tonight I just want us to we'll pray later on but um, I really want us to have understanding I like us to read together is projected as loud as you can one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament uh-huh and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars so there is such a state where a man can turn many to righteousness he says they that be wise they shall be as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many not few in God's mind he desires that every believer would participate listen in this dimension of kingdom advancement as far as the establishment of the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men is concerned largely we have left this ministry to evangelists we have left this ministry to those we call the fivefold they are the only ones who make the altar calls they are the ones who print tracts they are the ones who do all of these things and then for those who even engage in what we know to be evangelical activities they largely do not do it with understanding they just do it um, in honor of a, 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 a suggestion or a program by the church or some kind of structure that makes them feel spiritual you see the thing about the kingdom is anything you are doing that is not out of understanding you will not be blessed from it understanding is very important understanding is very important when carrying out any kingdom activity is is religion you see religion is an attempt to do spiritual things in ignorance and in the strength of the flesh and all through scripture you see that people who did even nice things religiously they did not receive any reward the system of the kingdom is such that you must take out time to understand the dynamics of whatever it is you want to engage in and then on the strength of that understanding you will now get up and act acting just because others are doing it acting just because you are told to do it acting just because you want to you know ease yourself of the guilt of separation will not bring the desired results that's why we do things for a short time and we do not have the impetus to continue the drive to continue because we largely carry out activities especially in the body of Christ there's too much copying many people do not sit down to find out why why this why this why do I have to pray in tongues well I just saw apostle praying in tongues and I think he's good for me that's nice but a time must come in your life where you must have a personal understanding are we together why do i have to tie 
I think everybody who I know to be rich is tithing, so I should just do it. That's not enough. Conviction is very important in the kingdom. You must have a, a sense of personal persuasion. It produces restful confidence. So no matter how sacrificial the activities are, your conviction sponsors the strength to go through it. Lots of people do not prevail over the things they want to do because we largely act without conviction. We copy one another, we copy men of God, we copy churches, and then we do not have the strength and the emotional, the grace to push it to the limit and to stay there until results are produced. The Lord will help us tonight in Jesus' name. I, I have been burdened, especially in recent times, um, the Lord has been putting this burden in my heart concerning the need for the body of Christ to get back into what we have known in the body of Christ as the ministry of soul winning. Are we together? The establishment of the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men. You know, sometimes it's like wear and tear we can fade off certain areas of concentration while pursuing others in an attempt to look for certain things we sometimes drift away from the things that represent the foundation the the pivot the epicenter of christianity and our mandate as given by god sometimes we can veer off sincerely but we veer off and then we find out that we are doing other useful kingdom things but we may miss out on that which represents the foundation of the desire of God all through scripture you see from the Old Testament to the New Testament the Lord communicating his desire to draw men who have been alienated from him are we together all through scripture he would speak sometimes through the prophets and um, liken a nation to a harlot that has left her husband you hear scriptures like draw near to me and i will draw near to you when jesus came he used different parables that suggested restoration the parable of the lost talent the parable of um the, the prodigal son you know all kinds of um um expressions to communicate the father's desire to have the heart of people that have been rebellious to his way and his counsel turn back to him and I think that while it is true that this is not the only part of kingdom advancement, this is a major part of kingdom advancement. In fact, sincerely speaking, listen, in order of priority, kingdom advancement should first start with establishing the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men first before the systems. So if we have industrialization, we have civilization as a, use of, as a result of the practice of the culture of the kingdom and we have people going to hell, we have people who are not serious with God, you know that that is, that is, um, that is not balanced. Is that true? God desires first and foremost more than civilization, more than prosperity, more than education, more than, you know, people who have come into the working knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. God wants the hearts of men, the hearts of men to return to him in truth and in sincerity. Altar calls in many assemblies is almost not observed again. And the average believer may be able to boast of other spiritual activities like tithing like giving you know like service in the house of god these are very important aspects of kingdom activities but many people cannot tell you that they have contributed actively to winning and establishing souls everybody say winning and establishing souls say it one more time winning and establishing souls every single one of us here if i ask you to pick up the mic and tell me your experience you will tell me of one person here and there who insisted until you came to the knowledge of christ and for those who were already born again one or two people who had to um sacrificially follow you up until 
you are now grounded to a, an extent in the things of God and you are helping others too. But many of us are unable to extend that spiritual benevolence to others. So we sit back enjoying everything that um, has come to us through redemption and not extending it to others. And most times we tell ourselves, I'm not a man of God. Are we together? I'm not a man of God. So during a corporate evangelism like we have it, we can walk around and talk to people. But as a personal revelation, that part of your kingdom responsibility as a believer, as you'll be learning shortly, it is a responsibility. Listen, soul winning, establishing the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men is the responsibility of every believer. It's not a suggestion to choose if you want or not. It's, it's, it's like breathing. It is part of the component of your spiritual existence. And if we are not taught and pushed into that point, then there will be no continuity. A time will come you will find a whole generation bankrupt of spiritual things. Do you know do you know this was the mistake of many of our parents? They loved God. They loved Jesus Christ. They kept the values of the kingdom. But they did not think it to be such a big deal to pay attention to transferring the lordship of Christ to the heart of the children. So you can find a man and a wife, uh, you know, his wife who loved God so much but you will be surprised maybe a pastor and his wife and then you will be very very surprised that they have never actively preached to their child do you know talking to people about spiritual things is not the same as saving them you can discuss tithing you can discuss rapture you can discuss hellfire and heaven that's not preaching so that we are around people discussing the things of God which is good and very valuable but have we paid attention as to whether this person that I'm talking about has my son, has my daughter, has my friend, has my roommate, can I truly attest to the fact that this person is saved and if yes, is this person actively being established and grounded in the things of God it's a great concern in the heart of God. Many of us don't care. So once you have a child who is doing well in school, whether or not he's a serious Christian, he can come to church. Do you know many parents do not talk to their children about God? The children can learn around, but to have a day when you preach to your child and lead him to Jesus Christ, no. We leave them to other people. Are we together now? Do you know it's so embarrassing when the closest people around us have to walk with us and never get to know Jesus and then after many years someone somewhere will be the one to come and save them. How many children are taught about Jesus but never given an opportunity to declare his lordship. Look, talking about Jesus does not save men. Talking about him Talking about spiritual things. Talking about rapture. Talking about heaven. Talking about grace. Talking about whatever. It does not save men. Men must understand and receive the gospel of salvation. And be given an opportunity to declare their willingness to accept his lordship. So there are so many people around the body of Christ. But they are not saved. And let me tell you what hardens them. Because they've been around the things of God so much. They know scriptures. Are we together? They can talk. They've done so many things that look spiritual. And so they convince themselves that by those activities, they are saved. They are not saved. At all. Do you know, let me tell you. Even coming out, marching out to come for altar call does not save men. That's not what saves people. There's nowhere in the Bible... That says the moment you come out in an altar call, you are saved. No. These are just representations that have been adopted by the body of Christ. To help and guide people. To be serious about their decision. And then to have a way of getting their details and follow them up. But that's not what saves people. 
in fact let me surprise you reciting salvation prayer is not even what saves people because the bible says you must believe you can stand and you are joking you are just talking because you have to repeat what you have been told and not be saved and go back and you are still hell bound and a candidate of hell soul winning soul winning is not just saving people's souls so winning is establishing them let me emphasize this when you get people saved and leave them the way they are they will not grow and chances are that their, their lives eventually many of them will derail and even get back to their lives establishing the lordship of christ is more than just saying a salvation prayer so you guide someone and he says lord jesus you know i am born again and you are happy you say this guy I, I saved him he's my soul the key is establishment 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 very very important that believers not only come and bring people but see to it that they are established All through scripture we see that the Lord um, has emphasized the need of people who are lost to come and to draw nigh to him so every believer is called to participate in the advancement of the kingdom but more specifically tonight in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men there is nothing as beautiful as a life that has been changed transformed you know when when how many of you have seen someone you know was not serious with god and then all of a sudden you look at that person a few years later and find out that the person is a burning and a shining light there's nothing more beautiful than a life whose values changed a life whose ideology is changed someone can come and say i love the lord with all my heart that's how some of you were you are even surprised finding yourself in the house of god loving god so passionately and pressing into the things of god some of you know where you were who you were and all sorts of stories but by his grace look what he's turned your life into now so there is a spiritual reality that must be established in the hearts of men being born again is not just an emotional thing it must come with transformation it must come with transformation when men are not transformed by the power of the word then it is not the word that saved them there must be transformation so there's a lot of faulty supposed born again many believers who claim they are born again and for many years many years yes of course i know that our growth in the spirit is progressive but at a point in your life i should be able to look at you and see your values altered the same thing you used to believe before and after no change the same way you used to live no change the same convictions the same ideology believe me you are not born again are we together now yeah. there should be progressive transformation as a sign that the seed of the word of God has been planted within your spirit and if we don't pay attention to this we will keep celebrating crowds for instance and we'll keep looking at a society that is depraved men and women who God you see that's why there are so many members in church but very little people that God can find space to move with why is it that we have millions of members congregations scattered around the world but god is still looking for people because there are very few people i'm telling you this who have experientially allowed the lordship of christ to be established in their hearts they are the ones who have given him space to find expression through their lives before i continue i want to ask you a very sincere question can you look at your life you who was or were and you who is now can you note a noticeable um tangible transformation if you cannot find 
a transformation in ideology in beliefs in passion in priority you need to revisit what you have called being saved say amen, amen. praise the lord mm. all kinds of music before all kinds of music after anyhow living before anyhow living after and you say it doesn't matter no it, it matters you are not born again it's as simple as that there must be some degree of priority the passion look let me tell you something when a woman is pregnant are we together when a woman is pregnant the transformation that occurs in her is mandatory and automatic mandatory and automatic except except she has not taken in if she has taken in it will begin to alter her psychologically physiologically there will be noticeable alterations that's how it must be if the seed of the word of god has been planted in you then there should be certain things your appetites your desires your values and most importantly your priority let me tell you how you know you are really saved is that your priority about God and the things of God supersedes every other thing yeah that's what our parents told us when they got born again all of a sudden there's this song that says um, when all things that surrounds me become shadow in the light of you that's what happens a new life a new life and all of a sudden you look at the things that represented your aspirations and your passions and they look like shadows compared to what you have found this is how jesus teaches about salvation that someone had a field listen and then he found a treasure the parable of the treasure he found a treasure when he saw the excellency of that treasure what did he do he went and made sure that he sold everything bought that property and remained there but what we do is we take the treasure and go somewhere else that's not salvation you are not saved what i'm saying i know that is hitting a lot of us but i am telling you sincerely it is important if you're a pastor here don't sit down and keep smiling at your congregation because they are smiling back at you make sure they are saved make sure that the people you are leading that the people you labor on day and night are saved you see that passion to see souls saved is not in many of us so you can have a roommate you can have a friend you can even have your loved one and not care there is no contribution from your part to make God a priority no. not saying anything not doing anything I cannot see any active effort on your part that you are making to turn their hearts to righteousness is God helping us tonight it is part of our kingdom responsibility if we love God to be intentionally committed listen intentionally committed not circumstantially committed if it just so happens that i find a soul that needs jesus and he says sir i want to be born again then you lead him to christ that's not evangelism that's not evangelism the same way people intentionally look for jobs because you know without that job there is no food the same way people intentionally look for husband and wife someone comes and says jimmy I'm, I'm trying to look for a life partner you see how serious the person is that's how serious you must also be with soul winning see this is not religion there is a spirit the spirit of the Christ that is at work in you will push you to do that you see the gospel when truly received and the power therein will you will be too grateful to keep quiet find out people in the bible who receive things from jesus even when jesus said don't tell anybody they were too grateful to keep quiet the madman at gadara the bible says he went to the decapolis and brought the people remember the, the that woman who married um six men and jesus being the seventh man in her life the bible says she left her she went to fetch water but she encountered something that was superior she left it 
when God is one of many important things in your life there's an encounter you've not had you hear me say this all the time listen listen the God being a priority non-negotiable priority under no circumstance regardless of what excuses you would have should God at any point be second place in your life that's what must happen to you first you must experience it so that when you get someone born again you know what the person should become like when you get people born again and they do not yet have your passion you know the job has not finished you should draw them to a point where it eats them up it's called the zeal of the lord hallelujah so you can stay 10 years how many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care how many wives whose husbands are not saved how many children whose parents are not saved look at me over 90 percent if not everyone if not everyone including myself you look at your immediate family or your extended family you will find people who you know are on their way to hell it's a highway to hell are we together now yeah i know that you hear people say this emotionally just preaching evangelism but i want to tell you something i don't mean to scare you but i want to seriously tell you there is a real place called hell there is a real place today like this called hell are we together the Bible says, and books were open. Listen to me. Books were open. And another book was open, which was the book of life. Hear what the Bible says. Whosoever's name was not found written thereof. The Bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere. He was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once. Listen carefully. It says afterwards the judgment. It didn't say after that a celebration. After it is appointed unto man. You see, in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me, please listen carefully. I have had the opportunity to be at several funerals. I've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people I knew were once alive, now dead. At that point, brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whether you have a PhD, listen please. Whether you had a first class, are we together? No matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you have gone to at in five minutes not breathing it becomes useless has it occurred to you i can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and i'm gone this body lies lifeless you will wake it you will pray on it you will prophesy on it you will pour oil on it the body lies down lifeless what does that tell you it tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal listen 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 seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive so if i give somebody school fees that's good he's going to school if you say you want to marry and I give you 500,000 to help you and marry, you will like me. You will be very happy. But the moment your body, this body you are seeing, can no longer host your spirit, everything becomes useless. Jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man, um, Lazarus and the rich man. Do you still study your Bible? Or the job took it away there was a man who the bible says was very wealthy and there was another man who was lazarus i'm not talking of poverty and prosperity i'm talking of two people 
are we together now the bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you're about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is nobody nobody who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is nobody who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time i checked which was many years ago statistically eight people die per second how many people from when koinonia started till now calculate if we are still working by that eight people and part of all those people who died some were tongue-talking christians some were pastors some were prophets are we together now they've all died no matter what you think about them see this life is brief i am waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men is not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no take it down mike i want to sing a song don moen song when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life every other thing in life only becomes meaningful 
when your eternal destiny is secured did you hear what i said every other thing in life hear me please every other thing in life i don't care what it is is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved and then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen every time there is a bereavement they send me text messages and I get a text message oh apostle so 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 has died and you know the first thing that comes to my heart most times over 90 percent of the people send me a text and say apostle i know if you speak a word he will come back to life frankly speaking i believe in miracles i believe in miracles i've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry but my concern listen my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life listen as it is knowing that this person died in Christ you can die in money where are you going mention it you can die in education where are you going to you can die in politics where are you going to die in an aircraft the only ones that are wise are those who live in Christ and if need be die in Christ it's not that you died in what you can die in worry is still hell you can die in stress is still hell please hear what I am saying you see people dying all the time and we keep watching them there are people today every time you think of you know right now based on the Bible except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know I believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the Bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in Christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind I'm not saying those things are not important but they are only important listen they are only important when the major things are in place. Is your father born again? If you hear right now, look at me, listen, wherever your father is. If you hear right now that he drops dead, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy? Or will you cry in grief? If you hear that your mother has gone to be with the Lord, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy or cry in grief? What of your roommate? What of you? Because there are people who will never take this thing seriously. You will always come for koinonia. You will always go to churches and do a lot of things. But are you saved? It's a very serious question. That you are working for God does not mean you are saved. That you have a Christian name, Joshua, Jesus our salvation. No, 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 no. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. That's very important. They need to come. We need to participate in getting. This is not adding members to a church. Listen, listen. Now, this is where I have a problem. Come. When, when we go for evangelism, for most people, sadly speaking, we are just shopping for larger congregations. Now, of course, it should culminate into church growth but the foundation listen is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness do you know i can get this brother saved filled with the holy spirit loving the lord and as i've gotten him saved i've gotten 200 other people saved in him are we together 
because this person now will take those values look how some of you a few of you that have really participated in soul winning look what has happened through your life to others i'll never forget one of our ladies years ago she might be streaming following right now and um her entire family they were not born again none of them was saved then she got born again and god granted her grace i think her younger brother also got born again and then eventually you know she kept pressing passionately and intentionally the mom now got born again it was left the father alone that man refused and said no way he will not get born again i know if you ask her what she wanted god to do in her family it's not to build a house it's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point she just wanted everyone to be saved i remember very clearly like yesterday the day her dad was saved when her father was saved she called me crying we met around then in the campus chapel and she said look her whole family had been saved do you know when he was saved his family members had to drive to his place and they say which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to jesus if his finances we can sort it out and the man got saved under living faith so that 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 fire has come to stay the joy of salvation when we give testimonies and we say praise the lord I built a house somebody just built a house and he dashed me we stand up we roll on the ground but when we say praise the Lord someone God said we just clap and hey, please go and sit down because of our priority our priority I've seen a few people that have trusted God to be saved get saved and I've been surprised at the joy the joy that filled my heart who in your life needs to be saved through you not needs to be saved who in your life needs to be saved through you there are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation and you're not doing anything about it i challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child will insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them god bless you we have a threefold participation let's rush quickly Threefold participation. There are only three ways we can partner with God in soul winning and the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Only three ways. And I want to teach you now, please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor. Listen, I think I should press this in. This is not the work of pastors. This is not the work of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies. This is not the work of men and women of God. This is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer. It's just that we are not taught that when you are saved, we teach people about their rights in Christ. But we never teach people about their responsibility in Christ. The only reason you have rights is for responsibilities. You cannot be taught about your right in Christ. The inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is. With every privilege comes responsibility. Every privilege. There's no privilege that does not come with responsibility. If I buy you a car, then you start maintaining it. You come to me to maintain the car, I return it back because it means you are not qualified. It's a privilege. But I, I, I give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it. Is that true? When God gives you an anointing, 
He expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it. That's the responsibility that comes with that privilege. If you love privileges without responsibility, then you are an irresponsible person. So we have a threefold participation. The first dimension or the first participation, the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession. Write it down. The first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer there's no you, it's not something you go and wait for an atm no the grace is there once you are alive and you are in christ the ministry of what warfare and intercession why do we have to pray so that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel we are going to look at a number of scriptures second corinthians 4 please verse 3 to 4 second corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 and then you give us first corinthians chapter 6 chapter 16 verse 9 the ministry of warfare and intercession look up please we're going to read a lot of scriptures we we'll have to be very fast but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are what so as obvious as these truths are when somebody is not in Christ, it's not as easy as you think it is. There, is. there are lots of things you can believe now because the Spirit of God is in you to help you believe. How you know it was the Spirit of God is because you criticized this before. You criticized praying in tongues. You criticized a lot of things, but now you have embraced it. It's by the Spirit. It's not just by growth and maturity, physically speaking. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Uh -huh, next verse. Verse 4, please. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Are you seeing why they believe not? Because although they are looking at you, their minds, their spirits are blinded. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, you can see that man. The moment you leave Koinonia, he looks at you and says, now what, what, what kind of thing are you doing? You sing for over, over 30 minutes. Are you the only one? I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go? Don't just insult them. There is something that is making that happen. When they say, shout Jesus or do this and you are doing and somebody is watching and say, ah, how can responsible people behave like this? There is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non-effect to people who are not in Christ. That's what necessitates the ministry of intercession. If your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of God, don't hate them, don't fight. There is a spirit, listen, there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to God in truth. So you can see someone who is a smoker. You will sit down and talk to him. While you are talking to him, the guy will say, Kai, this will be the last cigarette and you are watching him you are even encouraged then you rub his back and say you are a good boy two weeks later you check his pocket and it's not just one you will see a packet because there is a spirit listen counseling never saves people you don't counsel people into salvation that encounter with the seed of the word of God that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing we have little respect for it if someone falls under the anointing it has a physical manifestation and so we say wow great power was on him but when someone gets born again most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough the ministry of warfare and intercession have you noticed for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities have you noticed that the moment you finish praying that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother it's not normal there are spirits they respond 
just like Daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in Babylon to come and put a decree so you finish praying you just rounded up three days fasting as you are rounding it up there is war all of a sudden your food becomes salty madam you are in trouble no there is a spirit look men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them this body is a is a dumb terminal this body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it you have to know this about people so that you can learn to love people this is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people it's difficult to love people based on the way they behave you have to look beyond that you have to access an information that is more than that so if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you and you look at him and say i will kill you you are fighting in the flesh there is a spirit no sane person will do that when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get deep behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will come and do the same to them demons speak to men they don't have to be under the influence of or, 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 under under the anointing there are many people saying nonsense you know it's a spirit that is speaking there's a way you see men talk you know that's not them an interchange between them and another spirit the same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking it is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him so you have to pray when you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that you can return with casualties you must pray challenge those spirits that's what we do in koinonia before every service the prayer department is praying I am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of God penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are are we together I once ministered to a gentleman somewhere uh, while they, they used to do counseling at my place and this guy entered and he just entered and sat down and came in with the mother and the mother said this this boy I, I'm tired of him he's a terrible person he's this and that and while I was looking at him the Lord opened my eyes and I'm telling you there was a spirit comfortably comfortably when i say comfortable you know that this spirit is not under pressure whatsoever and i saw that this is what makes this boy behave this way they said when this boy is angry true god is my witness even five people will not be able to hold him is that a normal human being hmm. the ministry of prayer listen before you do anything pray pray i think this is worth talking about i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer tonight but learn to pray let prayer precede your action don't sit down and assume you know what to do pray 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 before taking decisions pray before taking actions there are spirits that are antichrist everywhere the antichrist is not just a person the antichrist is a spirit that is at work now opposing the purposes of god in the lives of men pray you are going for a job interview you just say i got first class you are not praying you want to go and save someone you are not praying the moment you are going the spirit is waiting there as you are entering he will tell you see i tried calling you yesterday you didn't pick you think i'm your mate say sorry i came to talk to you about just okay, get out of here and then when you leave the spirit leaves and the person is back you see people acting you know it's not them they may never admit it but brothers and sisters, 
there is a spiritual realm everybody say there is a spiritual realm that controls the happenings of everything here listen it is the day you want to come for koinonia that the person who is supposed to give you money will vow and say i will never give you money again why it was not about that it's because you are going somewhere and you will hear something that will change you you've got to pray people who do not pray become victims i know we live in a time where people say it's not all about prayer <laughs> it's about it oh it's about it in this wicked world that we live in you have to pray keep the forces of darkness where they belong keep the forces of darkness where they belong you must pray you must pray he spake a parable to the end that men ought always not often to pray so you pray lord i'm coming for koinonia i know that there are people coming with burdens and there are wicked spirits that will try to cause trouble for them on the way so that they will not get to cgc there are all kinds of things like their phone missing like their wallet missing so that they will stay arguing on it and not arrive there and hear the word that will change them so we pray we silence those spirits And while you are, you just plan that I'm not coming for Koinonia today. Say why? Say I don't have transport. Someone else wants to come to Koinonia. In answer to that prayer, the Holy Ghost will lead the friend to come and say, let's go. Say I'm not ready. Say I'll pay for you. You see, that's an answer. It, it looked like action in the earth, but prayer programmed it. Prayer programmed it. How many believers live their lives carelessly and we are victims the purposes of god is not advanced because many do not pray when was the last time you took a prayer request and knelt down in your prayer altar woke up in the night to pray just for intercession father increase more souls salvation don't say me i'm the shy type can't you pray men ought always to pray not to faint. let me tell you listen there are many of our loved ones i guarantee you from now to december if you will pray for them you'll be surprised what will happen they may not listen to you but one day god will take them to one meeting where one man of god is and before you know it the power of god will carry them in that meeting the next thing you just hear they'll tell you i've been filled with the holy spirit i'm two weeks old praying in tongues everybody say i will pray say i will intercede warfare prayers warfare prayers are not discussions listen warfare prayers are not prayers of petition right we have a teaching like that hopefully next year on prayer a series on prayer there is a difference between supplication there's a difference between petition warfare prayer is you taking advantage of all the tools that has been given to you in redemption the name of jesus the blood of jesus the word of god these are tools that are given to engage the forces of darkness and establish the victory that has been wrought in christ over people over territories when we talk of warfare and intercession that's not the, that's one of the reasons listen listen hold on that's one of the reasons why god gave us the prayer language of tongues it's not just for you to feel anointed it's a mechanism to help you engage in intense warfare intense warfare do you know let me just digress a bit and speak to someone here you are where you are now because you have not caused the gates of hell to give way we don't we don't it's not by physical strength this victory is wrought in the secret place one hour two hours you listen listen let me teach you how to pray you see you don't pray come david Dam. you don't pray blindly you use your mind like a like a picture to zoom the thing that you are trusting God for and you direct your prayer there are you getting what I'm saying the Bible I will show you where this is the Bible says he can do above the things that we ask or your imagination must play a role in prayer 
the tongues is directing it but your mind is like you keep a picture so i'm praying for my family that's what is on my mind as i'm praying in tongues i know that this tongues is not for edification of my spirit this tongues is for warfare to that end yeah that's how to pray that's how to pray fire that produces results you lock yourself off your phone that's not the time to be pinging and praying you are not serious you pray with your heart see let me tell you i believe in corporate prayer but i believe in personal prayer there are certain dimensions you will only hit when you are alone hmm. there is a way you can be praying with somebody at a point the person will be tired and he will make you feel stupid you too you will feel guilty and say oh yeah let's round up father we give you all the glory has god finished with you listen when you are praying the holy spirit is not there as a tenant He's the direction of both the duration and the strategy of the prayer. You don't choose how long you just want to pray. You stay there till you command victory. I tell you if, you, if that is established in the realm of the spirit, you can walk out and laugh and watch all the physical nonsense and jargons that happen because they have been settled in the realm of the spirit. Many people do not settle things in the realm of the spirit. That's why whatever comes to you physically destroys you. Unfortunately, it's unbelievers that know how to engage this the moment you speak to somebody and say see um, you are not going to get promoted then he looks at you and says all right manager I've had you the next thing the guy said can I take one week uh, break I just want to go and say hello to my family and the person rushes immediately in the night while you are snoring your way the person is there and all his anger is in the realm of the spirit. He's with the herbalist there. He's bathing, he's drinking, he's saying whatever things, doing all kinds of things. Then they carry your picture and do all sorts of things. And the herbalist will say he's done. And then all of a sudden, the manager is sleeping in the night and sees a stranger walk up in his dream and say, If you don't promote this guy, the guy will get up in the morning and call the board meeting and say, Look, a few developments have been happening strangely in this company and we are promoting somebody listen you who is the christian you are there angry and saying but i'm qualified and the guy is saying congratulations sir. ah you are now a great man and then he takes the title of whatever to the shrine and that's how they move forward there are people who literally live with charms as in they live with it they, it's a daily bread it's their version of prayer they know they must be in constant touch that's why you talk to them they say be careful though. you are talking to me you will die like a chicken and you too that you don't and you, and die like, and you find out that your leg is already swelling before evening you don't confront darkness carelessly until you have stamina in the spirit all this bragging we do in the body of Christ will land us in trouble will land us in big trouble jesus i know paul i know meaning there are some people that are not known can i say i must be known somebody say it can you pray in the spirit just in one minute sound an alarm to the gates of darkness no the fight is not physical the fight is not physical the fight cannot be physical it's in the realm of the spirit victories are established in the realm of the spirit the physical realm is only a, a realm where people act they act what has been finished stop confronting realities from the physical realm the job issue is spiritual the salvation issue is spiritual the stubbornness of your loved ones are spiritual stop wasting your time stop blaming people it's from the realm of the spirit that's how you command victory the ministry does not just grow by publicity it's in the realm of the spirit pray pray Oh yes, I am victorious. 
every unsaved person we tear down those walls we command the forces that stop them from hearing the gospel every spirit that stops them from going to the house of the Lord we command it hallelujah please sit down first corinthians 6 verse 9 thank you david quickly first corinthians 16 verse 9 look up please write these scriptures i will just talk on them quickly and then we'll move to the next one for a great door and effectual is open up to me what is the limitation there are what the person wants to come you say he stays close to koinonia here his house is just close by it looks short in the physical but in the spirit the distance is far it would take prayer to shorten it clear those forces off hmm. see let me tell you there is a way the devil can know you your voice the same way you say hello and you know somebody's voice yeah you can be known because you are, you are a frequent uh, in, in a network there are those there, there are frequent programs Th those you, you step into a package for those who are always calling many of us only call when there's trouble it must become a habit you must pray you are lying down and you just roll just for waking up for that one minute the devil hears it she kata kata and then you sleep again. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let me tell you, when, when you are like that, you will be surprised what will happen to you. You will get up and just in a few minutes, you are just sitting down and the moment the thought of someone comes, he's not saved. That's not the time to say, oh, I think I'm missing him. No, Rika Tokaba. What is happening to him now? We secure him. Marakoto Sobada. And then you wake up with any dream that does not look like it oh come on see i'm teaching you what i do if i'm not doing it you will know you wake up with a dream that doesn't make sense as you are waking up eh? before you why as you are waking up the spirit that was sent on that errand will know that one who has understanding is there i know it looks like i'm sounding silly but this is how victories are commanded so you look at men in the physical and you cannot see what they are doing physically so you will be angry because you expect them to to labor physically but the labor is in the spirit hmm. any church listen there are three departments now every department is important especially in koinonia but hear me i'm speaking to pastors there are three departments in any church and any ministry if the devil wants to destroy that ministry there are three departments number one the ministerial team strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter one the first place of attack of darkness is the shepherd the man of god or the ministerial team number two the worship team listen carefully they are vested with the responsibility of creating the atmosphere for the presence of god to find expression and the devil will do anything within his power to water down the efficacy of the presence of god number three the prayer department by the time the prayer and and for the prayer department it doesn't he there, there are very little things that kill prayer people big things don't destroy prayer people little things little things i like this lady why do you like her too and your entire robust prayer life comes under fire hmm. ah pride little things are you getting blessed any man of god who has spiritual sense will guard these ministries in his church or his ministry personally do you know let me tell you let me teach you one secret on how by the grace of god i administrate over e and i it's like there's something god has done to my spirit it's like a rope 
God connected my spirit to every department. All the departments in this ministry is like a rope. Huh? The same way there is, I mean it literally. There is a level. Of course, they rise and fall. They move up and down. But there is a level that no department must go under. The moment they go under, I pick it in the spirit immediately. I know something is wrong. Either I must come and find out what is wrong or I must pray or whatever it is. If the problem is from me, you know for sure a retreat. Quick. The, 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 every other thing is cancelled. Mm. That's how you sustain fire. You must be sensitive and discerning. And prayer does that. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians 1 verse 5 to 11. Long reading quickly. Let me just take our time and let's read quickly. We have a number of scriptures and I want us to read them. 1 verse 5. Okay. It says, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded. We are reading down quickly, please. Down to 11. It says, And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer this and that and that now listen it says hold on it says which we also suffer or whether it be comforted it is for your what and next verse and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall you also of the consolation we're reading to 11 hurry up please for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble listen which came to us in asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in god which raised the dead look at what they went through verse 10 who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us last verse 11 ye also helping together how that's why we were victorious ye also while we were going through those things in the mission field when they were about to kill us this is how you help ye also helping together by prayer for us so it was not just that we were mighty men of God there were times we were about facing death but he also helped us by prayer next scripture very powerful scriptures that's why i'm reading them philippians chapter 1 14 to 19 please let's hurry up oh, just give us verse 19 really our time is gone but you can write this philippians 1 14 to 19 scriptures that talk about the role of warfare and intercession verse 19 he says for i know i wish we could read from 14. he says for i know that this shall turn to my what how through your i know that the things that are happening around my life will eventually translate to salvation for me and that will happen through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ next scripture isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7 the ministry of prayer the ministry of intercession and warfare cannot be overemphasized let's read it two verses i have set watchmen upon thy walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord he says keep not silence next verse and give him no rest until what happens until he establish until he makes jerusalem a place in the earth there are men who pray jesus to come and are the prophetess there are people who pray the purposes of god to find expression hmm. let me give you two more scriptures romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then we look at first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 quickly please romans chapter 10 verse 1 
and then first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 i'm giving you all these scriptures because i, I expect that you go back and sit down and thoroughly look at them it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be what was the content of my prayer they might be my heart desire for my family members and my prayer to god for them is that they might be last scripture is the grand scripture first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 very powerful scriptures first timothy 2 1 to 5 i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many people for all men right for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty three reading down to five for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our savior who will have how many who will have so why do we intercede it is in god's desire that we not only pray for our churches but we pray for territories because his desire is that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth last verse for there is one god there is one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus he desires that that man christ jesus be revealed and that will happen when prayer supplication giving of thanks be made for all men that god will save them the second way you participate in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men the second way is through the ministry of direct soul winning through the ministry of direct soul winning matthew 9 37 to 38 let's have the following scriptures matthew 9 37 to 38 then we'll look at second timothy 4 verse 5 thank you jesus god is helping us matthew chapter 9 37 to 38 listen then said he to his disciples the harvest is truly what plenteous but the laborers are few next verse he says pray ye therefore that the lord of the harvest will send forth laborers that's the second dimension to be the laborer yourself the goers the ones who will make sure that they are participating actively talking to people if it means creating a blog if it means taking advantage of the social media if it means connecting people to the resources and the ministries and the platforms that will get them saved you are the goers second timothy 4 5 second timothy 4 5 it says but watch thou in all things endure afflictions and do the work of an evangelist you are not an evangelist but do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling do the work of an evangelist don't say i'm not an evangelist i'm not called into the fivefold ministry no it says do the work of an evangelist john chapter 3 verse 7 very instructive verse jesus himself speaking i like you to read it it's projected one to read marvel not that i said unto you aha uh -huh, ye must be born again i make it mandatory for your eternal salvation and so there must be goers forceful write these other scriptures down we'll project only one more but i want you to write this colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 the verses of emphasis is verse 5 to 8 colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 then give us romans chapter 10 please 
verse 8 to 14 romans 10 8 to 14 quickly please romans 10 8 to 14 thank you but what saith it look up please the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach nine we're reading down that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thy heart that god raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved read on for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so it talks about salvation read what it says for the scripture saith whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him so he's talking about calling upon him now then he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be now this is the problem 14. how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed the people it's not like they are rebellious but no one has told them no one has given them an opportunity it says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard then he says how shall they hear without a preacher there's got to be somebody who will take up that laborious responsibility to take the gospel to them very quickly the third key so that we will pray the third way you participate in establishing the lordship of god's kingdom in the hearts of men is to become a kingdom financier write it down so number one we see the ministry of warfare and intercession number two you are the goer number three a kingdom financier who is that they are the men and women who supply financial re resources for soul winning financial resources for the gospel anyone who loves god and is interested in participating in building his kingdom and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom in the hearts of men god is giving you what to do there are so many people who are so idle in the body of christ and they say i've not discovered my purpose there is a mandate that is upon all of us an intercessor a goer you are a laborer and then a kingdom financier let's look at a few scriptures Luke chapter 5 please Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 9 I found this scripture a few years ago and it blessed me I want you to pay attention pay close attention I want to share a few things that will really really bless you Luke chapter 5 is a long reading just follow me and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord he stood by the lake of Gennesaret too and he saw two sheep standing by the lake take note but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets no miracle no salvation next verse and he entered into one of the sheep which was simon's and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep yes please now when he had left speaking he said unto simon that's the reward he gets now for donating his boat launch out into the deep listen please and let down your nets for a drought this is talking about fish but we are relating this to souls now okay verse 6 okay verse 5 and simon answering listen he said master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word i will let down the net we are reading down to 11 and when they had this done they enclosed a what a great multitude of fish they were now winning souls and the ministry was expanding beyond their capacity now souls were coming but they needed a lot of help next verse and they beckon on their and they beckon on their 
they would have lost those souls because now there were more souls coming and they were holding more programs and the current financial level of the ministry could not take it and instead of losing the souls they called on certain people and he says which were in the other ship they called on to them come and help us so that we do not lose the souls and he says that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships so that they even began to sink they called on their partners their net was about to break it would have been a wasted effort because now they do not have venue for prayer those who were born again did not have a venue for prayer so they called on Rema Chapel come to us as partners and give us a venue so that we can pray lest those that are saved be lost listen there are men and women and everybody in my opinion in my opinion should participate in supplying financial resources for soul winning for God's end time agenda you know this this thing about finances every time it is said most people and, and of course I know that there are people who have um, done a lot of different kinds of things but the truth remains and hear me please that one of the responsibility I said responsibility you don't have to say we are raising offering please Pastor Alpha come and give 10,000 Pastor Femi come and give 5,000 no it should be part the same way you tithe there should be a portion of your income that is designed to support the advancement of God's kingdom that is very very practice in Islam right in fact it's part of the tenants they do it very very well that whenever you are rich you know it's been it's been a teaching that they grew up with that part of that resource should be committed in the building of you know um, 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 all of the, the structures that they raise and all of that When you read Acts chapter 4, don't turn there. Just write it down. Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37. The Bible says how that the early church, they had a culture. The Bible says there were people who sold their lands. There are people who sold certain things and brought the resources. It said none lacked among them. There was such flow of supplies. There was such flow of benevolence. Because many of them knew that part of their responsibilities were to supply financial resources. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a I'm giving you a few scriptures Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a it says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities how shall they be spread abroad through prosperity shall they be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem there is a place of financial supplies hear me please for the advancement of the kingdom and this is not a favor you know hold on please the way many believers the way many believers address this thing when they have a seed maybe to sow to a man of God or to a church the, the way they drag themselves and carry it and make it as if they are doing a favor do you know God is my witness I, I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not if you look at my financial statement God is my witness and I say this before the God of heaven whom I serve in the spirit more than 70% of my financial resources at this current level is distributed spread to the body of Christ for the advancement of the kingdom believe me I stand before God in heaven how much money can you use for yourself how much clothes can you buy this is not something that I started doing now it's been there when your heart is committed towards God because where your heart is there your treasure will be also committed for kingdom advancement 
there are many programs I don't uh, they are not directly my business the moment I hear about it I see what I can do to support it I'll never forget early this year there was a pastor very great man of God you know nice pastor somewhere and certain things happened and they were about to jam him and the people out of the venue and God was helping them I know this is a man that loves God and fears God and he called me he said man of God we're about to get embarrassed on Sunday there is no place of worship I said over my dead body not when I'm alive at least it's within my power how much is needed for this please send me your account details let me see what I can do and that man called me and was crying together with his wife they were both crying and said the Lord will bless you see kingdom investment is one of the greatest ways to be a businessman kingdom investment believe me when I tell you when done with a pure heart and done sincerely and out of love is a jackpot in the realm of wealth forget that the result may not look like it's coming immediately my goodness you will receive answers to prayers you did not pray kingdom investment as a lifestyle not something you do when some money just comes how can i have money that someone blesses me and the kingdom never participates in it no way and it's not because of koinonia no so you don't think it's just a bias just because i'm leading a ministry not at all i consider myself to be a proper kingdom financier there are many men of god who don't give they don't even sow to the work they are doing they don't they demand for money from everybody but they never give are we together how can i sit down i'm staying in a house of 20 million and they need a carpet of 1 million in the house of god no way no way no way no way no way see i'm showing you things that you do for the sake of the kingdom that will move the heart of god to vow certain vows i learned this i learned this attitude from david Biome. is a man who truly truly is a is a principality territorial principality when it comes to wealth and finances his pastors are the, about the highest paid they are more paid than bankers they live in an estate this is a church but it came through giving there are many of you let me talk to you i want I'm, I'm not saying this i want to help you there are many of you when the offering basket is passing it's truly i say this not don't think i'm trying to manipulate you i fear god but let me tell you something i'll tell you why many of us never strike a chord and get the attention of god through our giving immediately after the grace you are going to eat buns outside of almost 500 naira and there are people you take 50 naira look at it squeeze it back take 20 naira oh it's the new one you squeeze it back you take out the old one and then you just say usher please come back and then you just drop it and do you know the painful part some of us are working class and you have not changed there are some amounts i cannot give god it's not pride it's the truth i will be wicked how much do i spend on eating please talk to me how much do i spend on eating if i'm wearing a watch of 10 naira and i'm giving god offering of of 20 kobo am i stupid won't i sell the watch or carry it and drop it in an offering basket there are things you do that moves the heart of god make it a culture that kingdom investment is part of my life whether or not there is a giving program find a need create an opportunity and solve it and watch the god of heaven arise for you the third way we participate there's a man dr paul and Enche gave the story one time i think he asked god to grant him grace he wanted to set up he, he owned different businesses but he wanted to set up one business specifically for the funding of the gospel 
and God answered his prayers and he set up the business in, in hundreds of millions. Do you know 100% me? 100% of the profit, 100 goes to the mission field. That's an unkillable man. I show you a man that no charm, no charm can touch. Let me show you a scripture now. We are going to pray. Very interesting scripture. Very, very interesting scripture. Matthew 27, please. Matthew 27. From verse 62. We are reading down to chapter 28, verse 15. Take notes, please. 27, verse 62. Let me show you how Satan wages war against the finances of believers because he understands the role of finances in advancing the kingdom. Ready? This is the resurrection of Jesus. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate. This is Jesus being buried now. And the chief priests and all the people who made sure he died. Next verse. Saying, sir, we remember that the deceiver, you see the spirit of the Antichrist? Because who is the deceiver in scripture? Satan. Now he's using a man to call Jesus a name that only Satan should be called. The deceiver, while he was yet alive, said, after three days, I will rise again. Next verse. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure till the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first. Next verse. Pilate said unto them, ye have a watch. Go your way and make it as sure as you can. Right? So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Next chapter. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to down, you know, the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and so on and so forth. Next verse, please. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone. Next verse. We're reading down. Please hurry up. Next verse. Verse 4. For fear of him, the keepers did shake those who were guarding the tomb. I'm going somewhere. Just follow me. And they became as dead. Verse 5. And the angel answered and said to the woman, Fear ye not, for I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here for he is risen. Now listen, the whole fight is because of this. Remember they went to um, Pilate and said, we do not want this statement, he is risen. So go and seal the place. Are we together now? For he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Seven. And go quickly. Go quickly. Evangelize quickly. Are we together? Go and take this good news and tell people what has happened. For he is risen from the dead and behold, he goeth before you in Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Verse 8. Now listen. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did wrong to bring his disciples word. 9. Listen. As they went to tell his disciples, please follow me. Behold, Jesus met them saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. 10. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go and tell my brethren that go to Galilee. And you know, they should go there and they shall see me. Next verse, please. Now, listen. When they were going, behold, some of the watch, those who were guarding, they came into the city and showed the chief priests all the things that were done. They went and said, ah, what you are trying to avoid has happened. Jesus has risen. Next verse. And when they were assembled with the elders, what happened? And taking counsel, they gave. Please read it. They gave. They took finances and gave people to say Jesus did not resurrect. Next verse. And saying, his disciples came by night and stole him away. They gave them money and said, go and preach. That should be the message. It's true, we know he has resurrected, but we use money to silence the gospel. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him 
and we will secure you you won't lose your job just make sure you that anything you must do jesus is not alive we have given you the money and so they took the money and did as they were taught now listen to the, the, the dangerous statement that follows and because of the power of that money and their loyalty to it and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until today that's the role money played there are jews today that are doubting because somebody collected money how much more that you release your money and say let them hear oh they need a translator no problem we can pay for it there must be a translator who will speak in house and we will pay for it satan paid men to say jesus is not alive he's paying nollywood he's paying hollywood he's paying the illuminati he's paying musicians satan is still paying men to say jesus is not alive but there is a generation of kingdom financiers who know the purpose of wealth it's not just for buying cars and bragging and proving to people in the village they are men and women look let me tell you they will supply financial resources beyond imagination do you know when i see great ministries that i know are serving the lord in truth begging for money begging on tv if you can help us if you don't help us we will shut out do you know how bad i feel you've heard me say it again there are television stations brothers and sisters that need only a million dollars and it will write off their budget for an annum somebody this night is about to sleep with a billionaire by six o'clock tomorrow morning whether it's saturday or whenever they are crediting one million dollars to her account she's going to enjoy it for saying jesus did not resurrect that is the prayer point of a whole ministry as anointed as they are do you know part of my goal in life is to be extremely wealthy extremely wealthy and the reason is this i already have a catalog of ministries catalog catalog of ministries per month the same way you receive salary oh this is going to destiny makers international this is going to rema this is going to this this is going to capro this is going to this this is going to this ministry and you feel the joy and the excitement and you tell the devil i am paying to make sure your head is being stamped ah listen and then satan wants to kill you the anointing on your the recipient of your money will wake him in the night he will pray his heart out for you to remain do you know let me tell you sincerely i'm a very busy person but i found out subconsciously that there are people that when they call me i pick i'm serious it's not like i'm a biased person i just found out that it seemed like i placed a lot of priority and i had to trace and i found out that there were either people who were dangerous givers to my life or the house of god whether i knew them or not it's a principle it's a principle finance god's business and watch him defend you god will stand and defend you see let me tell you anytime things are not going well in your life carry a seed and run to a house the house of god or a man of god and just go and drop it there i'm giving you a big secret you have silent i don't care what the challenge is it has died these are mysteries in the kingdom those who know how to trade the secrets of the kingdom stand through life you look let me tell you pastor you can stand you are quarter to die is all that is nonsense there are mysteries you engage in i show you one of the mysteries the house of god the house of god your money is about to finish take some of it and run to the house of god drop it there you are you are it's a covenant you are connecting the supply with the house of god I, this is what i do oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory.
victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. The greatest attack you will ever get in your life will be in your finances. Make a vow to advance the kingdom and see all hell break loose. Satan will prefer a church where the healing anointing is flowing than where finances is flowing because every other thing you have you cannot share is yours your salvation yours the only thing you can share is your resources let me tell you i've shared the vision here but let me say it again one time very clear vision i don't know how many years maybe two three years ago i was praying seriously praying in the spirit and all of a sudden my eyes were open and my ceiling just disappeared there's a big tree just in front of my place and when I looked at it it was no longer a tree I saw a big the only way I can you know a spirit that the Bible calls Leviathan right that looks like a sea creature like um like a dinosaur these kinds of creatures now I saw it like that it was a huge the eyes one of the eyes alone was like the size of my head two red eyes angry the tail was and not it was like a snake connected to it the tail was another creature and had its own life by itself and the creature was looking at me i was looking at it he was looking at me and this is what he told me he said so you think you can release financial blessings for god's people something like that and that was it i know these spirits they know me i've seen them that's why he will not give you the job because god already knows that you have vowed that 20% of your salary will go for the kingdom and the devil will fight to make sure you don't get the job and you say what is it about my job it's not about the job it's about the agenda that the job will support yeah that's why satan frustrates people that's why you enter that exam hall and then he tries to get you blank it's not about the exam does satan need your script no He's trying to frustrate you because he sees the destiny and sees what will be advanced there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You make up your mind that you are going to start giving. All of a sudden, you see the devil want to come up with all kinds of schemes. Listen, I preached last week's message as a word of hope for you because there is, there is a rising church I guarantee you brothers and sisters not everybody is greedy again there are men who have vowed some of you here I know as you are looking at me you can give your last pin for the kingdom I know and such kinds of people there is going to be a transfer of wealth in 2007 I woke up under a very strong visionary encounter and I had four words audibly audibly massive kingdom wealth transfer the Holy Ghost spoke to me that there is coming a wealth transfer not just because preachers are saying it it's an agenda where he will make one person like a nation where people will build businesses and the profit is not for them they don't need the money it's just for the kingdom it's just for the kingdom you come and see somebody building a church and you say why are they stopping you come and look at CGC and say look look how much does it take you hear that they are they are putting a there was a time Benny Hill was looking for over I think he spends about a million dollars per week that's his budget a million dollars about 450 million naira of Nigerian currency on crusades and souls are you stupid to spend that much money just on souls no it's worth it brothers and sisters it's worth it it's worth it for as long as I live my money will preach it's not only my mouth my body will preach my mouth will preach my finances will preach and i i don't know how many of you want to join me but i'm on a project to stamp the gate of poverty territorially territorially i say it in the open and i say it in the public it will bring a lot of criticism a lot of things will happen but it is for his glory and for his kingdom when people are organizing programs and they sit down budgeting how much one million uh, how much do you have i have 10 naira how much do you have i have 250,000, and everybody starts coercing one another big men in many churches have become the holy spirit because they are the only ones who dictate how many pastors have to depend on people the welfare of so many pastors is so terrible 
Look at their wives. That's why many of you don't want to marry men of God. When a man of God comes say, I love the anointing, but I, I don't love the state. The, the persona is very discouraging. That is changing. Say it's changing. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, it is changing. I have seen books that should be written. I have seen books that should go to territories. Do you know there are places in Nigeria that they've not had the gospel? I'm not talking of America. In Nigeria. Imagine if your finances was part. I saw a picture, I think, on, on, on the internet that touched me. A little boy was on a scale almost dying. Uh, I think some of the, in the, the, the IDP camps there and the child was dying. They were barely feeding him with whatever. I, do. I don't know what that was dying how much is it how much is it david was a man who loved god he sat down one day and said how can i be in a palace and there is no house for god he said lord i know that you inhabit the heavens you don't need a physical building however i cannot as a king sit down and there is no house for you i will arise and build a house for you god said you have shed too much blood i won't allow you he said no problem i'm still not offended i will gather the money let my son build it there are men and women who will do that there are men and women who will stand up and override budgets some of you god will empower you by january you come and say how much is the budget for bus transport from january till december just this is it just take it see greed nothing kills greed like giving in the house of god the cure for greed is not counseling the cure for greed is not saving the cure for greed is not doing business the cure for greed is doggedly pouring your resources if you perish you perish I cannot tell you how many times in my life the Lord has instructed me to empty my account. Empty, zero, zero, zero. I don't mean zero, 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 home and abroad. No. What use is the money if his kingdom will not be advanced? When you see God blessing certain people, find out what they are doing. No, don't just say God is blessing them. Let me tell you, one day I was reading scripture and a revelation came. When I read the scripture, I found out that the last treasurer Jesus had was not very faithful. And I said, Lord, I suppose that there should be vacancy of treasurer. Make me one. Make me your treasurer. You know who a treasurer is? The money is not your own, but you pass it around. There will always be a portion for you, but you pass it around. A distribution channel. May God make someone hear that your current love for money will never give you finances many people think the secret to kingdom prosperity is business investment all of this there is a place for that but let me tell you all those things are rubbish when your heart is not you must have a deal with god it's a covenant let me show you a scripture psalm 122 we're rounding up psalm 122 verse 9 give us an niv please psalm 122 verse 9 oh, 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 oh. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 9. Are you stuck, maybe? Okay, please just turn it so that we'll hurry up. It says, For the sake of thy house, let me just quote it. I desire thy prosperity. For the sake of thy house. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Give us an NIV. Do you have NIV? If you don't, that's all right. NIV says, I will seek your prosperity. So, Lord, I'm looking for this money not just for a name for myself. No. Brothers and sisters, how many houses can you live in? How many cars can you drive? No matter how greedy you are, this is all the stomach you have. Hmm. but the kingdom but souls if you like buy any kind of designers it's finite it's finite do you know what made the rich man a fool his wealth did not flow his wealth stayed keeping money and sitting on it is absolute foolishness it's a sign of fear and foolishness there is he that scattereth 
and yet increase it there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty because of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity seek your good hallelujah in the next five minutes we are going to be praying in tongues all over this place and i tell you chains will just be breaking it's already happening at the back. This road, this very road, the power of God is setting people free. This road, this road, go ahead and pray. Whatever has held you bound must let you go tonight. Must let you go tonight. We insist in the spirit. Hallelujah. Whatever you came here with must let you go tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, Lord, you will visit your people. This is the pool of Bethesda tonight. The pool of Bethesda. The pool of Bethesda. There is a stirring. I know when something has been stirred in the spirit. I know when there is a stirring. I tell you, there is a mighty stirring. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Yeah, 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 yeah,
lump in the breast has just disappeared a lady has been healed right now right now check yourself a lump in the breast i don't mean reduced it has just disappeared just like that Zebaba teka baleke prai Zende ke pola kapari adaba Zebaba kapa to prede bong shakaba Zanaba daba kapa Aleluya 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 There were things I planned to do but right now something has been stirred up in the spirit And let's just ride with it Lift your hands he has been made Lord above thrones, dominions, and every name that has been named. I'm about to challenge principalities and powers, the powers that has kept you bound. Many of us are under yokes and spells of darkness. I tell you, as you shout that name, we will invoke his presence. There will be a mighty deliverance, mighty deliverance everywhere inside and outside at the count of three listen goodness at the count of three you're going to shout that name many of our issues and problems are tied to demonic oppressions but as you shout that name the sword from the hand of elohim will strike through your life and cause a separation between you and anything God has not planted there will be mighty deliverances I see mighty deliverances that will happen even outside are you ready at the count of three shout it with all your heart and there will be breaking of curses and yokes are you ready now one two get ready get ready the fire of God is everywhere three I command devils, come out, come out, yokes be broken, yokes be broken, yokes be broken, yokes be broken. I confront powers, I confront principalities, activities of witchcraft by the fire of the Holy Ghost, outside, outside, in the name of Jesus everyone under the influence of every power that is not of god i command those demons go 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 i give the chains falling falling i give the chains falling I hear the chain falling. 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 Break chains. Break. That's the command in the spirit. Break chains. Break. He must leave you tonight. Break chains. Break chains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Straight up, God is going to be breaking the chains of delayed marriage. Lift your hands, everybody. Hey! Delay. The Lord is instructing me to cause that spirit that came from all kinds of ancestral activities. Believe it or not, wickedness is real. It has tied down many of us, even maritally, especially our families. Hallelujah. You're going to shout that name Jesus one more time. And as you shout that name, anyone under the sound of my voice, whether you or your family members, you may not even know 
that this may be an influence over your life but tonight in this pool of Bethesda as you shout that name my God will visit you and tear apart anything that is causing a delay lift your hands goodness I see many ladies who will receive their deliverance right now at the count of three with the clash of the symbol alone one two three now I cause that spirit I cause that spirit powers powers of darkness spirit husband spirit wife I cause you I cause you by the power of the Holy Ghost I cause you bring them out I cause you by the power of the Holy Ghost release their marriages Every spirit that you have been covenanted with that is stopping you by the fire of the Holy Ghost by the fire of the Holy Ghost bring them out gates of marriage be open gates of marriage be open gates of marriage be open gates of marriage that has been tied down hallelujah we are still going to pray this is not all of it hey. hallelujah there must be a breaking right now it will happen some of you it may not be directly on your life but your family members the sword of judgment is coming upon altars of darkness that say you will not marry lift your hands my God I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost when I count three, shout that name. That power hey. must let you go. That power hey. must let you go. Hey. I come tonight with an apostolic unction. In the name of Jesus, hear my sound in the realm of the spirit. That at the count of three, let God's people go. One, two, three. Jesus. Let them go. I command the release. Exodus, Exodus, from this land of delay, Exodus, I prophesy, I decree, I declare, establish it. They must go tonight. They must go tonight. They must go tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This row, just lift your hands. Just this row, lift your hands. Because I see the angels of God standing. And I'm wondering why they are concentrated on this row. Listen, when I count three, I see the angels of God moving with cups but they have fire in them and they'll be pouring it on people it's still an aspect of deliverance at the count of three this will happen thank you my god one two three let the angels move right now let there be a movement a stirring a stirring a stirring a separation a stirring by the power the fire the power, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Rekete, Kopros, bring them out. Rekete, 
ministering to me. Gabriel. I give the chains for him. Gabriel. I give the chains for him. I give the chains Bring this lady. Chains bring chains. Let her go now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Look at this lady has been tied down. Hallelujah. This is the cause of hardship on our family. There's nothing that they do that will succeed. It doesn't matter what happens. But right now, I instruct you because I see you in the spirit realm. Go. Go right now. Go by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go. The same thing is happening to that lady. Let her go now. Let her go. One or shall lay your hands on her. Both of them, both of them. Go. Go right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I command in the realm of the Spirit. Go. Pray. Chains break. Hallelujah. Now listen. All the people in front here, God brought them out. I'm not speaking to them. I'm speaking to every spirit that was identified. You know my voice. At the count of three, I instruct you to let God's people go. At the count of three, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, you are leaving God's people now. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Come out of them right now. Come out of them now. Bring that lady. Bring that lady. Hey! I hear the chains falling. This lady is acutely under demonic oppression. Acutely. Bring her. Chains falling. Hey. Hey. I hear the chains falling. Just leave her, she will come. I hear the chains, I hear the chains falling. I hear How can a lady do this? Chains. Come back, come and kneel down here. Right now, leave her, leave her alone. Come right now. I hear uh, the you just leave her. You will see the power of God in this place. Today. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to pray for people with pain in the chest. A number of people with pain around the chest pain around the chest region hallelujah 
lay your hands there right now. Ulcer, peptic ulcer. Chains. Leave her, she will come right here by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please lay your hands. As I pray for you, listen, a number of you are going to feel something just leave you. When that happens to you, please run and come out here. And you will literally feel something leaving you. When that happens, let's have those people here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lay one hand and lift one hand up. And let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just help me with a symbol. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. Whatever is holding you, peptic ulcer, be healed. I command that spirit out of them now. Out of them now. Out of them now. That spirit, leave them now. Be healed. Be healed. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Now check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Hallelujah. I'm seeing someone with a severe pain on your kneecap. Just this kneecap. Very severe pain. In fact, it even affects you sometimes when you are walking. Where? Which of them? How long has it been? Okay. Lay your hands there. Both of you. Pastor, right? You are a pastor? Okay, no. I, I, lay your hands. That devil is a liar. Look at me. What's wrong with you? Huh? I've been having this knee problem. The bone is very tiny. The bone is tiny. And the load is heavy. And the load is heavy on it. I even felt Hold my hands. Way. It's okay. Bone grow. In the name of Jesus. Grow. I cast that them. Grow. I command you, grow. Grow. Lay your hands and I'll pray for you right now. As I lay my hands upon you, please test yourself and do what you couldn't do. Thank you, Jesus. Let the power of God come upon you right now. Please check yourself as I pray for you. Right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. God is doing miracles already. Check yourself. Any pain. Any pain, yeah. Just no, no, no. Come on, give Jesus praise. God is healing people right now. Any pain, any pain. Don't pretend it. Don't worry, God is healing you. Are you feeling any pain? Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Come on now. Look at this. Thank you, Jesus. Hold my hands. God is going to set you free. Hold my hands. We need to pray for you. Because I see you lying down. Touch that guy. Just look at me. God is setting your family free. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Ghost. What is this that I'm seeing? I'm seeing money. But it's tied with snakes. This is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is bringing financial restoration. Lord let it be. I stretch my hands. By the force of the Holy Ghost using him as a point of contact in the name that is above all names let there be breakthroughs in the name of Jesus God bless you God bless you Victoria Victoria I'm hearing the name Victoria please if I call your name or your case just hurry up we have a lot to do so that we can Victoria
There are two victorious outside. There are two victorious that are supposed to come outside. Where are you coming from? Outside here, yeah? Victoria. There's one more Victoria outside. Both of you are outside. The Lord will visit you. How are you, my dear? Are you married? No, you know why? Do you know why? No. That's one of the reasons why you came here, B. Yes, Is that not so? Yes, you were praying to God and you told God to visit you, man. Yes, sir. Is that, do you know me? No, Have sir. we talked with you? No, sir. The devil that has stopped your marriage must let you go right Amen. now. Amen. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because there was a time a man came into your life and he, was, he looked like he was serious uh, for reasons you cannot even explain. Yes, he just sir. gave flimsy reasons and left. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. Do you know why he left? I don't know. This is what I'm telling you. I see this all the time. I'm seeing the face of an old woman. It's not your face I'm seeing. This is what is driving men from you. It doesn't matter what kind of man comes. Something must happen and he will leave. But tonight, we see the chains falling. Hold my hands. I cause that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you too. Lay your hands on your stomach. If I don't pray for you, when it's almost time for marriage, they are going to tell you that there is a cyst growing in your stomach. Because sometimes you feel pain. Is that not? No, even now, before even now you are feeling pain. Yes, sir. Especially during your period. Yes. The pain is very I severe. And you have sometimes even irregular is when it's supposed to stop. It doesn't stop at that time. Yes, it is this thing we want to destroy. Hold my hands. Break chains. Break. You will feel like fire going through your stomach. The pain will go right now. Thank you, Jesus. Check yourself. Check it. Do hit yourself. Any pain. Any pain. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you. We call your husband, not a man, your husband. Wherever he is, I connect you. You will come and testify in the name of Jesus. This year, 2014, I lay my hands upon you and I release you to your marital destiny. Come, my dear. Where's your mother? Is she fine? I need to pray for her. The devil wants to put sickness in your mother. Father, for your mercy. I want to pray for somebody. Listen, this is a family and there is no reason to be embarrassed. That lady on pink, just touch her. Come. No, just where she, stand there, look at me. Lift your hands and look at me. Just look at me. Father, as you deliver her, let the power of God go to her family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of God touch you and set you free and set your family members free in the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all out? Eh? You are all Victoria. There's someone here. Please don't feel embarrassed. They took you to a herbalist. Listen. They took you to a herbalist and they gave you something to drink. Please, who is that person? I'm not saying you are bad. This is not, this is a family. Please, it's very important. The Lord is instructing me. I want to pray for you and break that thing. Please, this is a family thing. It's not even like it's just you. Please, we need to break this. There's, there's no reason to be embarrassed. Hallelujah. Can I pray for your mother? Hold my hands. Father. Sickness will never return to the mother. I set you free right now in the name of Praise Jesus Christ. Come, Victoria. Look at me. May God visit your family. Please.
this person I've spoken about, please make sure you come out. Don't, don't be embarrassed. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. They took you to a herbalist. They gave you something. One kind of, you're the one? Is he the one? You're the one? This thing is affecting you. Wait, stand up. Look at me. Don't feel bad. Just stand up. Stand up. Let me talk to you. Look at me. If I don't pray for you, you will die this year because this thing is going to kill you. Are you getting my point? That's why I called you out. Please remove his glasses. Hold it for it. Let, let it not break. Hold my hands. Because this guy sees dead people in his dreams and he doesn't even know why. Hold my hands. Hold it with both of your hands. The power of God will come through your body right now and you'll be delivered. Blotting out every handwriting and ordinance. Right now, be free. Everything you have taken inside your body that is destroying you, go! Be free right now. Sister, let me pray for you. Look at me. There is bad luck in your life. Everything works well for others until it gets to your point. Huh? Is that true? We need to pray very seriously. Even you, you are worried about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right? You see, listen, it's either you are for God completely. Part of the reason why a lot of people get into trouble is that you're halfway with God, halfway with something else. Hallelujah. Tonight, part of what will happen to you is that a fire will be planted in your spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you, my dear? Look at me. Why am I seeing rings on your hand? Physically, there are no rings, but I'm seeing rings on all your ten fingers. Look at me. I need to pray for you. Huh? You need to be very, very serious with God. Welcome home. God loves you. And he wants to transform your life. Huh? But for now, you'll be delivered. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Right now, I curse this spirit. Leave her now. I see you in the realm of the spirit. And it's time for you to go. Take away this devilish thing you are put in her life. Right now. Out. I hear the chains falling. You are not standing in for yourself but for your elder sister God wants to visit her lay your hands on your stomach because what is happening to her will happen to you Lord I take out anything you did not plant in her sister's body even right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be restoration in the name of Jesus Christ I need to break the spirit of loss from your life. Huh? I need to break it. I'm not saying you're a bad girl. Are you getting my point? Hold my hands. Just look at me. You are a devil of darkness. Leave this girl now. Go! Out of her now. Break chains. Your eyes is open, but in the spirit you are blind. And God needs to open your eyes. That's why you are in a lot of confusion. Father, let her eyes be open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the spirit of timidity from your life. And you too. Same thing. Same thing. Out! Leave her. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Break on your stomach just look at me Lord set her free from this pain something will come upon you right now and that demonic pain will go let her go Jesus. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. Where is the woman that came with her family from Abuja? Is she here? Quickly, madam, come with all your children. Please, all of them. Celebrate them as they come quickly. Break. Your time of visitation has come. That devil that oppresses you. Just give flowing strings. Please just play some good strings. Hallelujah. Witchcraft. This is what is destroying the whole family. Witchcraft. This is not just the issue of prayer and fasting. This is the issue of deliverance out of this. Right? Where is the son? Come. Something comes upon you. You feel like something comes upon you. And when it comes upon you, you do a lot of destructive things. You will even have power that ordinarily you won't be able to have. Is that true? You feel that kind of thing? Yeah. You will be delivered. Yeah. Right? Amen. Madam, I need to pray even for the finance of the family. It's not like you are lazy, but you are suffering for nothing. Is that true? Please help us. Is this mic working? Hallelujah. Okay, don't worry. We'll just use one. Is that? Yes, sir. I need to pray for you. Huh? When someone works so hard, so hard and then in the end of it there is nothing to write home about it's an error but the lord will correct it my brother the lord bless you you're born again you love jesus yes, sir. just you or your children myself and my children hold my hands my brother look at me jesus will set you free right now right you believe that hold my hands let's cast that devil of darkness out of your life father by your mercy in the name of jesus go that's the end he's free i need to pray for you you're going to feel like fire from my hands to your hands and within two weeks you will have a major financial restoration two weeks you believe it Jesus, confirm your word right now. Out of her! Now! Out of her! That devil of darkness. I command financial restoration for you. Where are the children? Both of you. You love God. You are going to teach the word. You. Huh? This boy, he's going to love God and he's going to... You know this now. God has already told you. Yes, he has been... God has told you. He, he, he has, has been, been into it. He has, he has been, been into it. Yes. Because the Lord showed me. I saw him standing with a Bible. And the Lord says he will teach the word. Hallelujah. I'll pray for you. You don't teach the Bible just with English. There is an anointing. Tonight I lay my hands upon you. Let that spirit of wisdom and understanding. Come upon you right now. Step into a new dimension. I open your understanding. To understand scriptures in the name of Jesus Christ you love God but we must pray so that because of the quest for establishment you will not join bad people you want to be successful but what God does not give you you cannot get huh because there are bad people around your life you are a good person but there are all kinds of bad people and we must pray huh lay your hands on your chest there's something that will leave you. You did not even know when you started fraternizing with what is not of God. But tonight, my God, let there be deliverance. You are literally going to feel something leaving your chest right now. Let him go. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Restore this family, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Go and return with your testimony. Where is the guy that has been skipping from university to university? His sister brought him. Are you here? The last Nsuka. Bring him quickly. His time of deliverance has come. Everywhere this guy goes, spirits torment him. Come and, come and stand here. 
this is your night of visitation it's over look at this guy listen i want you to appreciate what god is doing in this place there are people whose lives are, i'm not saying clap the greatest gift you can give anybody is not money it's not car is to bring him to a place where he can find genuine restoration hallelujah how many universities come you are come are you not the one who brought him how many universities same university they've they've driven him twice twice you think it's normal for somebody to get admission twice unn right and yes, sir. god will deliver him Amen. come my brother it's not it's not like you are lazy huh it's not like you are lazy because i'm seeing something like foam on his mouth and you cannot even articulate it's like it's as if you are manipulated god is going to set you free you believe this yes lord you reign forever lord you reign forever Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Something will leave you right now and you'll be free. Let him go. Now! Lord, restore to him the years that the canker worm has eaten. Restore to him the years that the palmer worm has eaten. In the name of Jesus Christ, restore to him. Restore to him. Let him rise up a brand new person. I worship you. Hallelujah. If there's any case of barrenness here, whether for yourself or for your loved ones, please come out here. If you're married, and you're experiencing barrenness let them stand in the front if you're standing here for yourself please don't just be emotional we're not joking here this is very serious business look at me look at me listen let me tell you something and don't please don't find it offensive every case of barrenness is demonic what did i say every Every, I don't care what the doctors say whether they say there is a womb or no womb the, the person who is having this situation may not be a bad person but I'm telling you it must be resolved spiritually hallelujah please keep playing you're tired play the strings ladies and gentlemen see the number of people standing for loved ones how many of you are standing in for yourself? For your sister, just look at me. Look at me. She's going to be delivered right now where she is from me. Don't worry. Just look at me. Just look at me. Let her go. You are feeling something coming up on you right now. Let her go. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whether they say fibroid or no womb is irrelevant. I'm just telling you that this is a demonic issue. But when God steps in, you won't go back. You can't go back to the way it used to be. Before his presence came and changed you. Just try to connect and hold your hands together and lift it up. Madam, come let me pray for you. Look at me. How many years? And then he stopped. We are going to pray. Look at me. This is a family thing. Hold on. Because it's not only you. Who else? My junior sister. Your junior sister has the same thing. She has never had a child. That's to tell you this is a spirit. But as God sets you free, he will set her free too. Onegi kagi ekele di wigi onye ne mema onye di kagi ekele di wigi 
Go and have your child. Father, in the name of Jesus, I open up your womb to receive baby boy. You will come back with the baby boy. Lift your hands and sing for God. Please lift your hands. I'm going to pray for you. Whether you are standing in for yourself or for your family members, the fire of God will come upon you and that person in question will be released. You are standing as a point of contact. My God, I pray that from my left to my right, in the name of Jesus, let the angel of fruitfulness move across this place at the count of three one two three right now wombs be open wombs be open take it take it take it take it miracle children take it for your loved ones take it take it from the realm of the spirit whoever you are standing in for i command all medical complications go all medical complications go i cause fibroid i cause every cyst in the name of jesus all those who do not have wounds we put brand new wounds now brand new wounds in the name of jesus the fire of the holy ghost is burning a lot of things burning a lot of chaff every spirit of miscarriage i curse it right now i curse it right now i curse it right now the spirit of miscarriage every spirit that comes to eat up children in the womb i arrest you you are bound you remain bound hallelujah i prophesy to every one of you here make sure you tell your loved ones we prayed for them that in the name that is above all names they will not only take in they will give birth like the hebrew women we forbid cs in the name of jesus they will give birth normally no devil will eat up any child there will be no miscarriage and for those who have stayed a long time we command twins we command triplets let there be a restoration i provoke it by the hand of god please don't think we're just entertaining prophecy does not just reveal it creates it creates it creates i tell you a lot of things are happening pregnancy is not just when a man meets a woman Mary said, be it unto me. We put miracle children in their wombs right now from the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please go back to your seat. We see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. hallelujah now very quickly if you came here specifically for healing i want to minister to the sick right now specifically for healing or you brought someone sick now is your time please quickly ushers coordinate them so that they will line up very well you came here with any infirmity please If you brought someone, now is the time to bring them out. The worship team will lead us in a powerful time of worship as we rebuke that devil. No matter how far you are, wherever you are, please find your way to the front. You came here for healing. It's called a miracle service. It's not just a name. Shut
Please, I need to pray for sick people fast because we need to release breakthroughs in other areas. There are people who your own is not sickness, your own is breakthrough. Please just line up. Those under the anointing, just leave them. There is a pool. Some of you, as you are standing here right now, the power of God will even begin to touch you before we minister. Now we are going to do it very fast. Hallelujah. Listen, it doesn't matter what your sickness is, right? The anointing is not just the ability to heal. It's the ability to bring solutions to any kind of problem. Are you getting my point? So while you are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I'm not going back the same. I'm tired. This is it. This is it. Shabalaba kalabalaba. Worship team leaders, Bishop, please come help me. Pastor Williams, hallelujah. Please, those of you who are seated, make sure you are not just seated watching. Be praying in tongues. We will minister very quickly. In case you are seated and you have not written your prayer request, let's save time. Now is the time to start writing your prayer request. And our online community, those streaming online, please, they can bring their prayer request. Hallelujah. Father, thank you because of your power. Let every sick body be healed. Let every sick body be healed in the name of Jesus. What's our genotype? What's our genotype? I'm not her mom. Who brought her? Mother, where are you? Where's the mother? You are the mother. What's her genotype? SS. She's SS. Don't worry. We're going to change it right now. Huh? Not just her, but this is something that will need to happen in the family. There is sickness parading itself as blood condition. It's not blood condition, anything. Change this lady's genotype right now, baby. Let SS change to AA right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And I cast the spirit of infirmity from her life in the name of Jesus Christ. Perfection in your body, in Jesus' name. Jesus. What's wrong with you, madam? Jesus. Hold on, please. Your son too is SS. All of you are SS. Huh? You too, you are SS. Hallelujah. Madam, don't cry. Weep not. For there is one who is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. Hallelujah. Your child too. Can somebody collect the child, please? So that I'll pray for her. He's sleeping, so just let him continue his sleep. Father, we change his genotype right now in the name of Jesus. And we rebuke sickness. Please hold my hands. I need to pray for you. There is a lot of poverty in your life. Look at me. Why do people hate you? Huh? Is that true? What? I can't understand why. How can they just hate you just like that? Look at me. The enemy has done this. But tonight God visits you. Change her story, oh God. Change her story. You will return with testimonies of dramatic breakthrough. 
in Jesus name all right let's save time healing in your name Jesus as I pray for you as you go back to your seat make sure you check yourself do what you couldn't do say Jesus Now. And God is out. Come out. A glory out of her. Now. God. Out of her. Now. That devil of darkness. God is Be healed now. Out of her. A Spirit of infirmity. God is a glory. Be set free now. Say God. He's a glorious God. Yeah, 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 yeah,
salvation. Ha! You are the joy of the whole world. I say you are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised and beautiful for all situations. joy of the whole world I say you are the great and mighty God so greatly to be praised beautiful for all to the wage you are the joy of the whole world you are the great and mighty God so greatly to be praised beautiful for all Joy of the whole world. I think you are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful for all situation. Hey, you are the joy of the whole world. Hey, you are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful for all situation. You are the joy of the whole world, and you are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised, Lord, beautiful all situation. You are the joy of the whole world. A great and mighty God. Go out of her now. So greatly out of her. Be praised. Out. You wanna join? Be healed right now. I change that medical result. Email, email, okaka.
All of you are Gabriel. The power of God is going to come on somebody, a lady outside. There is one lady, the power of God will come mightily upon her. Please bring her in. I need to speak to her. The power of God will come very mightily on one lady. Very, very mightily. I can't remember why I called you people, honestly. Let me pray for you. Where's your father? Is in this meeting. Where is he? I need to talk to him. You are the best. Eh? He's not around. I mean, he's here. You mean? He's in town. He's in town. He's not okay, here. I thought he was around. I need to talk to him. Go and tell him that the gates of delay has been shattered. Look at me. Look at me. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Go and tell your father that the gates of delay has been shattered. Father, confirm your word. I give you praise. Your hands will bring bread to your table. You are a creative person. Make use of your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to specifically deal with certain things right now. Hallelujah. Um... I'm not going to ask you to come out but I hope that they came out here we want to rebuke all kinds of incurable diseases I just want to take one or two minutes and rebuke incurable diseases because if we do not help God's people medically is incurable HIV hepatitis all this satanic things around make sure you never believe these things and settle on them believing that that's how it would be so please stand up everybody stand up please please rise up everybody We want to speak against every medical report that the doctor has said nothing can be done about it and in case you are here and any of your loved ones is in the sick bed please connect with them even as we pray right now hallelujah father I pray right now specifically for incurable diseases we depend on you and we ask for your mercy without your mercy these people are on their way to death but I thank you because you are the resurrection and you are the life and right now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands anyone with HIV in this place I declare be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ HIV be healed in the name of Jesus cancer be healed in the name of Jesus every form of cancer every form of cancer be healed in the name of Jesus every kind of hepatitis right now in this place I cause it to its root in the name of Jesus Christ hepatitis be healed be gone in the name of Jesus hallelujah for blood groups we are going to deal with that one when I minister prophetically Please lift your prayer requests. Pass it to the person at the last, at the last end. Ushers, please walk around all over this building. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is ministering to me. I want to specially pray for families 
with uncompleted building projects please find your way quickly and just stand here the lord wants to minister just one word i will speak i want you to believe i'm not saying you want to build a house please the power of god is touching people and changing uncompleted projects uncompleted projects please believe what i'm saying i'm not just playing pranks here as you're standing here the lord is going to set people free okay if, if there's no space just stand where you are and then i'll pray for you lift your hands everybody it will surprise you the bible says how that the hand of god came lift your hands the hand of God came upon Elijah the prophet and he ran the Bible says he overtook the chariots of Ahaz down to Jezreel I want to pray we are going to pray for everybody prophesying speed but I want to pray because the Lord is ministering to me specifically for building projects some of them are tied down because of finance some of them are tied down because of court issues some of them are tied down because of diabolic demonic things it doesn't matter what category sir or Gaza, god is going to visit you because your issue is it looks like it's money but it's not money this is witchcraft god is going to set you free are you getting what i'm saying lift your hands please my god i pray goodness there will be a lot of mighty miracles i want you to believe many of you are going to feel literally like fire it will come on your right hand it will come on your right hand in a very powerful way all across here right now the angel of the lord will move right now right now father in the name of jesus move right now everything stopping any uncompleted project your right hand the power of god is a prophetic language the right hand of god is power and by that power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus i command every uncompleted project be completed now in the name of jesus be completed now in the name of jesus every power stopping any building project i challenge you right now in the name of jesus every lack of finance responsible i command supplies from heaven supplies from heaven supplies from heaven supplies from heaven every land issue in this place every court issue we resolve it here tonight in the name of jesus christ go and return with mighty testimonies let the hand of god the finishers anointing let it come upon you and upon your loved ones a finishers anointing that unction that comes to finish what you have started receive it right now in jesus name god bless you please run back to your seat submit your prayer request very quickly hallelujah please listen there are a number of people here the lord is ministering to me mike can you play strings who is playing please play strings 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 just play strings hallelujah the lord is showing me a few people here please listen you had a dream and in the dream either a dog or a serpent beat you please come out there are a number of people in that kind of situation god is ministering to me that devil is a liar and what please if you, if this is if you're part of these people i've mentioned please come out a dog or a serpent i'm just flowing as the holy spirit is showing me because this is very demonic that lady is is, is one of the people and she'll be delivered right now
no matter where you are hiding even if you didn't come out here as i pray the power of god will locate you it's a very serious situation please stand up everybody please stand up everybody Bala, you're just going to clash the simba for me i'm going to pray because this is a very demonic thing the lord is ministering to me this is the deliverance of someone right now a snake or a, or a dog an animal beat you in the dream it didn't create any effect but you may not know what it is causing to you right now goodness i see a pruning fork an angel of the lord standing with a pruning fork hallelujah at the count of three as they clash the cymbal there will be mighty deliverances here and some of you in the crowd as it's happening to them it will happen to you hallelujah father right now let your power begin to move every demonic object in your body right now at the count of three come out jump out and go one two three go 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 out of them out of them some people in the congregation it will touch you there too out of them every foul spirit i'm going to lay my hands on everybody there. out of them 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 please help them Devil of darkness, out of them, out of them, come out, come out, everything that has not been planted by my father that is responsible for your limitation. Hey, hey. Oh yeah. Hey, hey. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I command deliverance. Oh dear, oh yeah. I command deliverance. Oh yeah. I command deliverance. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You will be delivered mightily. This is a demonic thing on you. Release her now. Release her now. Now. Out. Release her now. Release her now. You must let her go. 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 Let her go. Out. Come out. Out, go, go, go. Every devil, remove every demonic ring, every demonic chain, every demonic ring, every demonic chain. Let God's people go right now. Go, release her right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let her go now. Let her go by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Take off everything. Take your property. Pack your load on your man. Get set. Go, 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 go. Go, go. Go, go. Out of her now. Devil of darkness out of her by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out, I break covenants. I break yokes. Every act of witchcraft. I plead the blood and I set you free. Now.
Alléluia. Alléluia. Listen. This is the root cause of many problems in our lives and our families. Preachers have told us once you are born again, it's all right. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. You are seeing it by yourself that it's not all right. There is an operation of the kingdom that must separate you with darkness. Some of these people, what is happening to them is responsible for stubbornness, immorality, and we come and preach in church. We say stop it. It can't be stopped till that devil gives way. Bring this lady for me. Let her go now. Once and for all. Remove this demonic ring. I see a lot of rings on her feet, on her hands. Remove it and pack your load and go. 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 See, bro, you should thank me for what I'm doing. I'm preparing your wives and husbands. You just get up and come and meet a lady. And then you don't pray. You see why we tell people to be spiritual. That's why many people keep wondering. Why will a brother come to me and run away? Or why will a sister come? I break covenants. This is an usher. This is our own usher. Go. Go. I see you in the spirit. And I command you to go. This spirit that is tormenting this lady. The Lord is showing me. This thing has been in this family for 178 years. This is what God is showing me. It has nothing to do with her. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's save time. Have you submitted this? Father, let none of these people return with any influence. It must let them go. It must let them go. Hallelujah. So you see a student will write jam and write wayek and enter the school and all of a sudden become dull and people keep insulting. This child is not good. You think people just smoke because they want to smoke or they sleep around just because they want to sleep around? Brothers and sisters, there are influences and it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to keep the devil where he belongs so that the people of God can enter the reality of their inheritance. That's why you see people who keep testifying. Oh, breakthrough just started happening in my family. You may not know what has been limiting them. That's why here we don't just heal the sick. I told you the anointing is the power of God to solve problems. Any kind of problem. It's not just healing. It's not just wheelchairs. There are destinies that are tied down. And they need the power of God. You will be amazed that after you leave this meeting tonight, doors will just be opening. You will see how easy it is. And then you will know that something happened to you. It doesn't matter whether you came out here or not. Once you are under the influence of this sound, something is happening to you. Hallelujah. I want to pray on this request right now. Hallelujah. Many of you have communicated your thoughts and that of your family members right here. Please, if anyone has not submitted your request, do that very fast. As we pray on these requests, I don't care what you wrote here. May this be the last time you will see it. In the name of Jesus Christ, every Pharaoh and every Egypt that you wrote and dropped here, as surely as the Lord God lives, this will be the very last time. Hallelujah. 
Stretch your hands and begin to pray in tongues. Bishop, come, please, Pastor Williams, come as we pray on the request. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Make sure you are praying in tongues. Visitation, oh God. Visit your people. Visit your people, oh God. Let there be breakthroughs. Visit your people. Visit your people. Visit your people. Visit your people. She breaks the ball, da 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 ba. Oh yeah. She can take it, ba 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 ba. Oh rakata ba da da ba. Please stretch your hands. Connect oh, with us. Yeah. All those online, they should connect yeah. with us. Lord, let this be the last time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh dear, oh yeah. Thank you, Father. Because with you, nothing is impossible. With you, no request is impossible. Anything that is not in existence can be created. Father, we thank you. Because this request cannot defy your power. Thank you, Jesus. Because it is possible. Thank you, Jesus. We see the answers. Lord, we receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Because from this night forward, we we'll begin to see the manifestations of everything we wrote here. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for breakthrough for families. Thank you for jobs. Thank you for marriages. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. We celebrate you, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We declare and we speak over these requests. We turn them into testimonies. We turn them into testimonies. We turn them into testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you're a minister of the gospel and you came you came from another place what i mean minister make sure you're a preacher minister of the gospel you're a ministry and you came from outside of this state please come out i want to minister to you right now hallelujah is there anyone like that please quickly quickly let's save time just come and line up here the Lord will ignite you tonight. Hallelujah. Do ministry with integrity. Do ministry with truth. Ministry is not about money or flamboyancy or manifestation or going on air has no nothing to do with that hallelujah ministry with integrity with the fear of the lord that who you are in the open 
is who you will be in the secret. The secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. I want to pray for you. That God will characterize your life and your ministry with signs and wonders. That struggling will end for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands as I pray for you. My God, in the name of Jesus, let something come upon them. In the name of Jesus, let something come upon them. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let something come upon them. In the name of Jesus, let something come upon them. Let something come upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're about rounding up. Please rise up. The prophetic ministration is the greatest part of this meeting as far as I'm concerned. Please stand up everybody. This is the moment I want you to shout amen. We're about to open doors, breakthroughs of all sorts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wherever you can hear my voice, make sure that you shout a big amen. Please lift your hands. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. This is not the doing of any man. What you see is an election of grace. When God calls people, he empowers them. There are vessels today carrying anointings that can change people's situations and change people's story. Hallelujah. And I'm about to pray for you that something will truly open up in your life. This is the part you get to receive. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Can you play the keyboard mic, please? Please lift your hands. I want you to shout amen with everything that you have. Lift up your heads. O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, O ye everlasting door. Every gate limiting your progress in the name of Jesus we shatter that gate into pieces. I shatter it into pieces. Into pieces. I command gates, gates, gates. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Gates, I command, Ephata, be open, be open, be open, be open. Gates of marriages, gates of restoration, be open. Anyone trusting God for a job here, in the name that is above all names, I command miracle jobs now miracle jobs now miracle jobs now I provoke your destiny help us may they find you may they help you may they honor you for every limitation you have experienced in your life and your finances in the name that is above every other name i command breakthrough receive breakthrough receive breakthrough in every area of your life breakthrough in your academics breakthrough every result that is not your own we change it tonight we change it tonight let the angel of god Go to every faculty, every department. We command change. Any family that has been victimized in this place, any family that has been victimized in the name that is above all names, whoever planned evil against your family, we judge them this night. Let the sword of judgment rest upon evil to us. 
let the sword of judgment whoever said your family will not lift up their heads may my God judge them may my God judge them hallelujah every ordinance of darkness every enchantment every spell that has been written over your life that you will not become what God died what Jesus died for you to become this night we blot out those handwritings we set those altars on fire those shrines on fire and we release you anyone here who has suffered delay of any kind I don't know what area you have suffered delay or your loved ones but I want to pray for you right now my Bible says and I will restore to you the years canker worms can eat time they can eat years of men's lives but I pray my God and my King right now I shout it in the spirit restoration 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 receive it restoration I prophesy I decree restoration of joy of peace of finances of opportunities hallelujah there are some of you because of your mistakes of the past certain things have happened in your life and like Samson many people are laughing at you and mocking you that will your strength return I want to prophesy to you just like the hair of Samson grew back I call forth anointings that left because of indiscipline I call back opportunities that left people because they misused it I call it back I call it back the God who changes times may he change times to your favor hallelujah now lift your hands there will be impartations right now it is vain to attempt to serve God without the empowerment of the spirit there are many of you who are passionate about the things of God what you need is fire in your life what you need is grace what you need is authentic unction I'm going to pray for you let the men around you know you are serving a living God lift your hands it's going to clash the Simba and I'm going to begin to speak and there will be impartations of gifts prayer altars will come alive dry bones will come alive make sure lift your hands thank you Jesus hallelujah you're going to shout the name Jesus once and I'm going to begin to speak many of you my God I pray especially for those who have never had encounters dramatic deep encounters let these encounters swallow up spiritual laziness swallow up prayerlessness right now shout the name Jesus once take it now receive it the gift of the Holy Ghost fire fire take it take it inside and outside fire the spirit of prophecy receive it the healing anointing I release it upon you go and heal the sick receive it the healing anointing take it prophesy visions I command visions visions let the vistas of the spirit be opened up to you every gift available for your enriching I command 
prayer fire take it now take it now prayer fire prayer fire prayer fire Reketetete e prokotoba mamprakata e koske e bandapa reketetete reketetete e prokotoba I found the fire on your prayer altar it comes back alive I pray for you right now The Bible says, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, even thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness. And that oil sets you above your fellows. The anointing for distinguishing. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Everywhere you go, be set apart. Be distinguished. Take it now. Hallelujah. 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 And the Bible says, Esther went to a man called Haggai. The one who took care of the virgins of the king and he gave her a particular ointment to keep rubbing for one year and she passed the king once and he found favor i want to pray for you that anointing that can cause you to ride sweatlessly that grace for favor in the name that is above all names receive it now Receive it now. Receive it now. Shaka Baba Baba. Sekete. Mam Protoskopa. Shoteke te 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 te. Teke te Baba Baba Baba. Mam Prateke te. Yes, be distinguished. The favor of the Lord is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. It marks you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. It marks you. Hallelujah. 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 There are many of us who are praying and say, Lord, what was I born for? Why did you bring me here? What was I born to do? I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. It says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. No confusion. A purposeless man will never find fulfillment. I want to pray that God will grant you revelation of the reason why you were born that out of the seven billion people in the earth you were born for a reason therefore my god let the angel that brings revelation visit your people in the name of jesus through dreams through visions through prophetic confirmations receive the mandate of your life receive the blueprint of your life hallelujah every habit that you are struggling with that is mocking your christian experience i don't care what it is pornography masturbation anything that is compromising your christian experience right now i judge the spirits behind it i judge the spirits behind it and I command them to let you go. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free from every habit. Be free. Hallelujah. For those of you who do not have a zeal to study the word again, it's not like you're not serious. 
you don't even know what has happened to you there's no zeal to study the word some of you are finding yourself you were once on fire in terms of your word life some of you would pray through the night some of you would study suddenly distractions happen i want to pray right now son of man can these bones live again and he said only down the west i prophesy to you every dead spiritual life in this place my god i pray let the wind the east wind that reawakens dead things that is responsible for resurrection from the east side of the spirit let that wind blow over your life and bring restoration now 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 hallelujah listen to me god wants to make the best out of your life but you must be willing to yield yourself there are two kinds of people in this place right now there are those who have been taking these things of the spirit just playing around you may be born again but your life is so unpredictable you're not serious you know that you need to make it right there are others who have never made this decision for jesus you go to church you have a christian name hallelujah and there are others who are backslidden completely and they need to be restored as i count one to five those three categories of people whether you've given your heart to the lord and you found yourself derailing or you are praying and saying lord i want to be serious with you from today or you are saying lord i'm surrendering everything as i count one to five please i like you to run like your life depends on it god is waiting for you right here one please don't wait for anybody two inside and outside it doesn't matter what you have done run 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 i didn't say walk run run like your life depends on it three Jehovah, we praise you. Jehovah, we praise you. We praise your name. We praise your name. I want to pray for you lift your hands i salute you for making this decision this is not unto a man but this is unto god hallelujah i like you to say this after me from the depths of your heart please don't play games with god god is willing to make your life better than you can ever imagine now is the time to shame the devil and say enough is enough enough i'm tired enough is enough say after me convincingly from the depths of your heart Lord Jesus I repent of my sins you're not reciting a point make sure you understand what you're saying I repent of my sins and I love you with all my heart forgive me today I make Jesus the Lord of my life I ask for forgiveness cleanse me wash me I receive your life into my spirit from today forward ever and backward never I denounce sin and Satan and I live unto righteousness Holy Spirit come and live in me make me a new person in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted and I'll pray for you father receive these ones into your kingdom and your family let today be the beginning 
of a dramatic and a genuine transformation I break them free from wrong companies and Lord I pray that they will be empowered in the inner man to do mighty things for you hallelujah praise the Lord now look at me every one of you I congratulate you this is the best decision you would have ever made in your life and I want you to know that no matter what went wrong in your life this is a fresh start hallelujah now tomorrow listen please tomorrow Bishop Stan will be meeting with you at the chapel just close to the chapel bookstore for the experience of the baptism in the Holy Spirit you need it they'll be guiding you sharing with you a few foundational things it's very very important time is what sir 5 p.m. prompt please 5 p.m. prompt for now I like you to follow the ushers they are waving at you and they will have your information will pray for you and will follow you or God bless you please follow them God bless you follow them very quickly hallelujah let's take the following announcements very quickly if you're worshiping with us for the first time this is your first time aside from those who are going out if this is your first time of worshiping with us here at koinonia we love you and we want to bless you please wherever you are just find your way to the front right now god bless you please find your way quickly quickly koinonia celebrate them this is not your best there are people who came all the way from joss all the way from abuja different parts thank you so much god bless you hallelujah god bless you this is koinonia the ministry put together by eternity network international hallelujah thank you so much for coming we appreciate and we celebrate you we meet every friday this is not our venue our venue is cgc we had to make an arrangement because there was something going on there so we'll be there from next week we're back to our venue the lord bless you thank you so much for coming your life will never remain the same in jesus name stretch your hands saints of god and just bless them pray for them may the lord bless you we cause the heavens to be open over you we bless you with hunger for spiritual things in the name that is above all names may you experience the hand of god in dramatic ways you will understand the intimacy of the holy spirit in the name of jesus thank you once again for coming may the lord bless you may the lord honor you hallelujah i like you to just follow the ushers they'll communicate a few things to you and you'll be back thank you so much koinonia celebrate them very quickly god bless you thank you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline